<clears throat> All right, so step one is folding your paper. So in your supply packs, you need to get five pieces of the newsprint. That's that gray flimsy paper. Ten pieces of copy paper, just the regular printer paper. And ten pieces of the drawing paper. That is the kind of creamy paper. The color is in between that of the newsprint and printer paper. Um, so 10 drawing pages, 10 printer pages, and five uh, newsprint pages. Okay, so then let's move this down where you can see uh, and get my lamp. There we go. All right, so I'm not going to do as many pages as you are because this is just a demo, but each page you are going to fold hamburger style. So not hot dog, hamburger. Make sure you line the corners up really well. So I usually line the corners up, hold that in place, scooch back from center to make a crease, and then go out. So you need to fold every single page individually because you need that really good crease. You can just use the back of your nail to push it down. So every single page gets folded. I already had some of these folded. Uh, and the newsprint folded. All right. In your bags, you also have about yeah, two pieces of a book page. All right. Just a regular old book page. You are going to add this as a page in your t sketchbook. So this page is smaller than all your others, so you can decide how to fold it, but it has to be folded So because we are going to poke holes in the crease of these pages and stitch them together. We are sewing them together with yarn. Uh, so every single page that goes in your book has to be folded and have at least one, two is better, two holes punched through it so that it gets threaded in. Otherwise, it's just going to fall out. All right, so you can decide if it's going to be up towards the top of the book or at the bottom or dead center, um, if maybe it's going to be over to one side or even at a diagonal. So if you want to put it at a diagonal, just lay it down how you want and then fold it to match the crease of the other page. I'm actually going to draw a line in this, these creases so that you can see them better on the camera. Uh, that didn't work very well. Where's one of my markers? That'll do. I am going to fold this one at an angle like that. Uh, this is a piece of newspaper. Feel free to add extra pages from things around the house if you have old magazines or newspapers or old books. Even scrapbook paper, old sketches. If you have an old sketchbook and you want to pull that out, uh, notebook paper, you could put that in, whatever you want. So then we are going to organize these into registers. So I'm going to open them up and stack them in. Um, I'm placing them how I want them to be. Note that the last page you put into a register, you are going to see the whole page at once when you open your book, um, except that it will have a, your, a line of yarn through it when you bind it. 
If you put it in somewhere in the middle of the register though, now once this is bound, when I flip to open my book, I only see one part of it. And then when I have to flip over a couple pages to see the other side of it, all right? So it's all about how you want your book to look. We are adding these different pages just as a way to experiment and it can create some really interesting drawings um, because they, things overlap. If you have a book page with or a newspaper page with words, you can even um, do some blackout poetry little bits in it. All right, so this is one register. Mine only has four pages in it, uh, four pieces of paper in it, uh, which when folded in half makes eight sketchbook pages at this that are this half size. Um, I want you to put five to eight pages in each register. I would not put more than eight because it gets really hard to pull the needle and thread through when it's time to bind it. Um, the more registers you have, the longer it's going to take you to sew it because every register has its a separate stitch, okay? So keep that in mind. Do not do 20 registers of one page because that is going to be 20 separate rows of stitches times every hole that we put in it. All right, for my example here, I'm just going to have two registers. You will definitely have more. Probably, you're gonna have at least five registers, four, at least four registers, I would say. Okay, that one I'm gonna leave on top. Also have this book page. I'm gonna put, I think I'm gonna skew these. So when you stack your registers, think about how you want them arranged on the page. So be mindful of how you are going to arrange your pages. Um, if you had a very skinny piece, I'm afraid to use torn edges. Um, it's actually called a deckled edge. And sometimes it creates a, it's a really interesting texture. You don't always have to have everything clean cut. If, let's say I wanted this piece to go across the page like this. Well, it's really skinny and we are only going to be putting three holes at the top and three holes at the bottom to sew it in. If it lands in between those two holes, it's just gonna fall out when I put my book together. So you need to make sure that every single one of your pages is in at least one hole. Two holes would definitely be better. I am gonna go ahead and add this to my book. Gonna put it slightly off center though, like that. Actually, I think it's gonna go in the middle. This is gonna go in line with the bottom or top, whichever way you're looking at it from the camera. Now I have one register and let's see. Two registers. You like I said, you will have at least four. So then these registers are going to be stacked together. And so I forgot one more thing, um, your paper bag that is in your pouch of supplies. I want you to find some scissors Mine are stuck in my little hippo. Bin. There they are. See, it's a hippo. Um, and cut some pages out of this. So I'm actually gonna kind of a curved design here. So this is my paper bag. I just cut down the side and a, the base to open it up so that it was one layer. All right. <clears throat> 
So be creative with this because I want at least two pages made from a book, newspaper, magazine, something like that. You can do more. Don't get too crazy because you have to sew it all together. Um, but at least two from a different book or newspaper. And then at least one made from the paper bag. So I have this. I'm going to fold it in half here and make a crease right in the center. Make sure it's nice and tight. And I'm going to add this to my smaller register. No, I'm not. I'm going to add it to this one. Okay. Line it up in the middle. Well, actually, I'm going to put this one at the bottom. So these are actually longer than my book. So I didn't cut it from this large side and I didn't cut it down to where it fits, but it has, it actually already has these handy dandy accordion folds. So I can fold it back into the book to close it without it hanging out. Um, so be creative when you are doing your book. I have lost, oh, and that is why you put your needle back in your sticky note when you're not using it so it doesn't get lost. I, some when I'm working, sometimes also will stick it um, through my shirt with the point sticking out away from me. Just be mindful that it is there so you don't go to take your shirt off or something when you get ready for bed and it pokes you in the eye or anywhere because it hurts. I've done it. It hurts. Um, I also have put it in my jeans before and forgotten. Like, and it stabs. And then I go and I like hit my thigh or something and either poke my hand or my leg. All right, so I forgot to add this. So I need to add it to my holes. better idea. In order to get my holes lined up, I'm going to put it in the back and just poke through my holes that I already had. That way I know it's in the right place. And I didn't have to measure again. All right, so there's my two registers. All done.